Hello my soccer universe. Well, while I'm wearing Lask, you may already have guessed from the thumbnail or if you've seen my short video, uh, that I'm not so happy with their performance overall. In fact, they lost in a rather underwhelming fashion. So yeah, uh, we'll talk about that. But uh, there were quite some interesting results going over. Uh, quite a few lopsided wins in both comp competitions, but there will be a dedicated Conference League video as well. And yeah, um, I would say let's not waste too much time. I actually want to start with Lask's game in Toulouse after losing at home to Liverpool and uh, to lose actually getting a draw at saint gilles it was kind of a game where you think if Lask gets a point out of that, that one, uh, it might get actually quite interesting uh, moving forward because then you have a decent shot of making it into second place, maybe even third place, which kind of would be the goal. But honestly, while I think defensively they were sound, and yes, I'll say in my short video, there were uh, three key players missing, namely Sasha Horvat, who is our midfield engine, but there was also Felix Lukaneda, who is a stalwart already in defense, a tall, tall guy that I think cannot be adequately replaced, and then Rene Renner on the wing. Yeah, those are three Austrians. Uh, that are actually a little bit, not necessarily a super backbone, but they are really important pieces of the puzzle and they were missing. And I don't want to deny that the other ones tried to live uh, up to what they were doing, but it is just, there's a clear step down. After settling for 50 minutes, I really thought that Lusk had the game kind of under control, held to lose at bay. Yes, to lose were more initiative and the one thing I have to say, Offensively, Lusk in the first half was not present. I mean, the biggest chance was when uh, a bad back pass, uh, the goalie just padded it away before, I think it was Bello who then fell uh, over him. And then the goal came rather, rather unnecessarily. Yes, it was a nicely played move by Toulouse. And I don't want to discredit Toulouse because, you know, they also had to play their job there. It was a nice move, but the way I see Andrade uh, badly defending, on the linger and then the ball going, going over and Suazo who had just had played the ball on uh, the linger being not picked up by anyone not even by Tiaz and he having then a free shot, shot on a goal it's just calling then the linger had another chance right thereafter but that was basically it second half started and actually Lusk showed something for 15 minutes they had two really good chances one after a shot of Ljubicic on the, on the rebound, Uzo gets the ball, yeah, has not his feet sorted, but it's an open net. If you're not so hasty, you probably get this onto the net, and it is a goal. And a little bit later, Ljubicic, again, a really nice ball through from Uzo. And yeah, we also have to talk about the pitch here. It was horrible, Linz against Liverpool, but you can tell there was a rugby World Cup being played because that pitch looked not good at all, and the ball bouncing, and maybe this played a part in it, it's still... Ljubicic has to bury that one. And that was that. From that moment on, uh, there was a one good save by Laval. There was another chance for uh, Toulouse. Toulouse basically played it safely home. And Lask was not threatening anymore. And that was the game. And so Toulouse actually sit on four points. Quite pretty. Yes, they go now into the matches against Liverpool. But I think uh, they, they will feel well. Whereas Lask definitely have to get now something at Union saint gilles Probably even win. Uh, the same... Uh, time. Uh, let's finish uh, this group. Uh, Liverpool uh, won 2 0 against Union St. Gilles. Uh, could have been many more goals. Uh, it was also the duel of the two McAllister brothers. Uh, both goals came late in their respective halves. Grafen from back in the 44th and then in stoppage time, Diogo Schotter should have been more, uh, if we are honest. Okay, for the rest, I changed George Jersey into a team that actually had a much more impressive result, which you already see, but we'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, Panathinaikos uh, opening day winners against Villarreal, a nil nil at Maccabi Haifa, meaning they stay up. Villarreal actually bounced back with a solo shot, and Terry missed a pair stoppage time penalty for to equalize for Rennes. So Villarreal also back on track. Uh, in uh, the group with Roma and Slavia, it's pretty clear the two teams that are going through uh, Roma. Yes, Servet had one big chance at the beginning of the game, but then it was all Roma. Ugly new sponsor. Ugly, 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 ugly. Uh, no matter however you look at it, 
Uh, Romelu Lukaku gets the first goal and then it's Belotti Pellegrini and Pel Belotti again and Belotti scoring for Roma usually means there's something happening. Uh, Slavia, team that I'm, I'm wearing a very impressive 16 over Sheriff. Uh, it was already done after 10, 10 minutes with Kittil and Okpu scoring, then an own goal and then in the second half Schranz uh, do it there and again Kittil uh, getting the goals but that was uh, property destruction and those two teams seem to be the ones advancing from the group. Karabakh got the win at Hecken and then Leverkusen after 20 minutes had an easy 2-0 lead from Pong and Teller. They played exactly how they play in the Bundesliga. It's the fun Le Le Leverkusen, many uh, moves going forward. Probably should have added two or three more. In the 75th Mulder hit the post. And then in the 87th, uh, Breivik actually pulls one back and it got a little bit more tense than it needed to be. Uh, let's move to the early slots. Uh, I think the stance that I gave was probably Freiburg against West Ham, that West Ham completely controlled in the first half and took an early lead through Paqueta, uh, after, who headed in after Bowen cross. However, coming out of the half, um, Freiburg really went for it. Got a very quick equalizer through Seller after melee in, in, in the box. Had then the chance to take the lead. Our Hurler uh, pulls one over over the goal. And then um, Wout Prowl's cor corner goalie come, comes out. Missed times it and Agert can head. Headed in his 2-1 West Ham. And then West Ham played actually home safely. Um, and get a big win in that group. Uh, Olympiakos also thought that they had a very uh, secure lead, 2-0 after 57 minutes at uh, TSC, Bacca Topola. They actually have quite a nice stadium. Uh, but then uh, Djakovac pulls one back in the 63rd and in the 90th Pantovic gets an equalizer. Uh, so also big result for uh, Bacca Topola. Ajax had a 1-0 lead but Ajax uh, equalized the second half and uh, OM actually had a relatively safe 2 0 lead, 19th and 20th. Both goals come, come, come uh, quickly with Brighton not being there. And it's not the jersey review time yet, but isn't it curious that the Zerbi, who was with uh, Sassuolo, is not playing for Brighton and Brighton is playing Sassuolo jerseys away from home? Just wanted to mention that. Pascal Cross pulls one back and then João Pedro gets his third goal of the, of the, of the competition with the third penalty. 2-2 draw, I think in the end kind of deserved, although after the first half you really would have thought that Marseille should have pulled through there. Aris, 2-1 over Rangers, that I did, uh, did see coming. Uh, Betis' win over uh, Sparta was a little bit harder, uh, because Biraman, Birmancevic in the third minute had, had already put Sparta in front, but then a horrible goalkeeper mistake, completely coming out, misjudging the fly out of the ball, and so the out can equalize just six minutes later, but then it's an Isco header, yes, Isco header, that wins it for Betis late, later on. I think this is a setback for Sparta, but I think they're, they're looking not too bad overall in this group. Sturm, only 1-0, one, one has to say. A Bövin getting goal, who else? He scores literally all the European goals for Sturm, not so much in the league. Uh, but they missed so many ch uh, chances, especially in the first half. It should have been two or three nil. Uh, and then in the end, it got even tense. And still, they could have settled it. It did not happen. Uh, while Atalanta, impressive performance at sport, Sporting. Uh, Scalvini and then Ruggeri <laughs> going around the goalie to score that, 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 that one. Make it two, uh, two nil. Holding Sporting more or less at, at bay, yes, then it's a penalty that we can discuss. Hand is like that, but it's from such a short distance, kind of a natural move, whatever it was. Gökeres uh, converts that one, then Sporting could have immediately got an equal, but in the end, Atalanta played safe home, and they seem to be the class of this group. So um, let's look at the standings here. Uh, group A seems all West Ham, and then even Freiburg. I think the auto, those two will go through from that group. Uh, group B, that's kind of the hipster group, but also I, I want to call it the group group. That, that's wide open. I in the lead for now, OM, Ajax, Brighton. I think there's a lot, lot, lot to play for Group C, also dead even. Uh, Rangers and Betis at the moment on the bottom, but you know, it's gold difference. I think there's a little much to play for. Group D takes a little bit shape, uh, given that Sporting have already beaten Sturm Graz away from home, it's Atalanta and Sporting, and then Sturm, big win away from, from home that might actually see them through uh, to the Conference League um, uh, playoffs. Lask, yeah, doesn't look good.
only 9% of advancing uh, to be honest and it's a steep hill to climb you basically need to win your remaining home games and get something at Union and Gilles and hopefully hope that the others dropped or that Liverpool is just gonna romp through the group it's the expected tough group I still have some hope for third uh, spot uh, but the Nikos leading ahead of Villarreal Stadrenum and Kiwi Haifa out uh, Slavia and Roma they meet next, so that that's gonna be interesting. I think Le Leverkusen and Karabakh also will uh, come out of that group. It's not not a good one for the Nordic teams, let's put it that way. Overall, it's the two Premier League sides, Liverpool and West Ham, that are up top with Liverpool, the overwhelming favourites. They are by far the strongest team in this competition. Maybe if one of the Champions League teams come in, they, it will get a little bit more level, but the moment it looks now, it's uh, Liverpool, 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 and then the rest. But West Atalanta, Leverkusen, Roma, especially Leverkusen, I have to say, uh, don't underestimate uh, those guys. And here we have the upcoming fixtures when we see uh, Brighton Ajax is obviously the one. I probably will uh, have a little eye on Sturm against Atalanta, Sparta against Rangers. Maybe an interesting one too. Um, and then Union saint Julien at Lask. Actually, I will be traveling on the day, so I'm not sure how much I will see. But since it's a late, late kickoff, there's a chance that I see it. I think we have already uh, arrived then. And then Roma Slavia. I think this is the other one that's pretty big. I think Liverpool will toy a little bit with uh, Toulouse. So those are my thoughts from the Europa League. Let me know how your team did in the Europa League. Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, add anything you want in the comments and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.